also joined by Mohammed Abu Nimer. He's a professor of peace and conflict resolution at American University, and he joins us live from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for being with us on the program, sir. Now, it's been the deadliest conflict to ever take place for U.N. staff, which just goes to show how dire the situation in Gaza is. What are your thoughts on the U.N.'s position from October 7th till now, taking into consideration the veto powers that the United States and the UK has that has worked in Israel's favor. Yeah, um, thank you again for hosting me. Uh, uh, the, the UN is, is just another organization internationally that I think been victim by this conflict as well. Uh, and it really, uh, the, the position of the US and the Britain in general, also other European countries who supported Israel after uh, its attack war in Gaza, illustrate uh, their efforts to undermine this international uh, organization that the entire world agreed on its function and its own mandate and its regulation. And I, unfortunately, the, the fact that we have five superpower controlling the uh, entire, uh, entire globe in many ways with the power of veto that is paralyzing the UN from uh, implementing its uh, you know, over 70, 70 resolution on the uh, Palestinian issue. And this is just another example uh, that we're witnessing, and the war has illustrated how unfair and how um, badly the Security Council need to change in a way to pr prohibit and prevent this veto power in its uh, institution. Professor, hospitals are known as safe havens, but not hospitals in Gaza today. Schools where children learn and play have become the graveyard of Gazan children. Wounded people are dying en route from the north to the south, once hoping for safety and security. I mean, I'm really at a loss of words, looking at the destruction and devastation on our screens on a day-to-day -day basis. I think you're speaking the mind and the heart of uh, millions and hundreds of millions around the world when watching these images that comes out of Gaza from a Shifa, a Shifa hospital or Al Ahli hospital and many, many other hospitals in Gaza. All hospitals are under attack by the Israeli army. And again, the justification, you know, it's, it's the same justification used for killing 100 uh, UN aid worker, which is unheard of in the history of this organization since 1945 uh, or 46. Uh, again, again, this issue um, comes boils down to the fact that we have superpowers in, who gave the Israeli uh, right-wing government, a government of apartheid, a, a green light to kill, a license to kill, and they are continuing with their campaign, so it's a genocidal campaign against uh, the Palestinian people in Gaza. If you want Hamas fighters, mm -hmm. you should be able to distinguish between uh, and they protect civilian, protect children, protect hospital, give people safe haven. The, the difficulty uh, is that they continue to say that we open a safe haven, we open a, a humanitarian path, yet they have bombed these areas all over the Gaza, north, middle, and south. And that's where the Gazan are screaming for help because there is no single space that is safe mm -hmm. in, the, in Gaza. And I think that's where the tragedy is. But uh, after all, we have given, we, the international community, have given the green light uh, to Israel to continue and uh, bombard. Right. I, want to, I want to pick you up on that point because the word condemn has been thrown around left, right, and center since October 7. And more than condemnation, we now need action. What happens now in order to prevent further atrocities from happening? I mean, Netanyahu, he's not agreeing to a ceasefire, and there are doubts that he will agree to a ceasefire even if all of the hostages are released. Yeah, you know, that's unfortunately what happened is that we were hoping that the, the Arab and Muslim uh, Muslim uh, uh, countries, when they met in Riyadh, to produce some concrete action, including the pressure on the U.S. and the European country. Uh, quite honestly, there is only the U.S. and some European countries who can influence the decision of the Israeli government, right-wing government, 
the Arab countries, it seemed to me, including the Muslim countries, decided to, to say what you said earlier, to stick to the condemnation and wars without necessarily using their leverage that they have. They have peace treaties with Israel. They have oil. They have number. They have diplomatic relations. They have economic relations with the U.S. and also with the remaining five countries who can influence the Israeli decision. And unfortunately, there is no one activating that. What can be done is what's being done right now for millions and millions of people to continue and the protest and to make sure that these demonstrations are not con are not perceived as um, as anti-Jewish or anti-Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they are protest for protecting children for ceasefire and for a humanitarian aid to be given to civilians who have lost their life. All right. Professor of Peace and Conflict Resolution at American University, Mohammed Abu Numar. Thank you so much for being with us here on the news hour. We appreciate it.